Day Six, the Fifth Story of the Decameron. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Eugene Smith. The Decameron by Giovanni Boccaccio, translated by J. M. Rigg. Day Six, the Fifth Story. Messer Forese de Rabatta and Master Giotto, the painter, journeying together from Mugello, deride one another's scurvy appearance. Nay, Fila being silent, and the ladies having made very merry over Shishibio's retort, Pamphilo, at the queen's command, thus spoke. Dearest ladies, if fortune, as Pampanea has shown us, does sometimes hide treasures most rich of native worth in the obscurity of base occupations, so, in like manner, tis not seldom found that nature has enshrined prodigies of wit in the most ignoble of human forms. Whereof a notable example is afforded by two of our citizens, of whom I purposed for a brief while to discourse. The one, Messer Foreza da Rabatta by name, was short and deformed of person, and withal flat-cheeked and flat-nosed, insomuch that never a baroncio had a visage so misshapen that his would have showed as hideous beside it yet so conversant was this man with the laws that by not a few of those well able to form an opinion he was reputed a veritable storehouse of civil jurisprudence the other whose name was giotto was of so excellent a wit that let nature mother of all operant ever by continual revolution of the heavens fashion what she would he with his style and pen and pencil would depict its like on such wise that it showed not as its like, but rather as the thing itself, insomuch that the visual sense of men did often err in regard thereof, mistaking for real that which was but painted. Wherefore, having brought back to light that art which had for many ages lain buried beneath the blunders of those who painted rather to delight the eyes of the ignorant, than to satisfy the intelligence of the wise, he may deservedly be called one of the lights that compose the glory of Florence, and the more so, the more lowly was the spirit in which he won that glory, who, albeit he was, while he yet lived, the master of others, yet did ever refuse to be called their master. And this title that he rejected adorned him with a lustre the more splendid in proportion to the avidity with which it was usurped by those who were less knowing than he or were his pupils but for all the exceeding greatness of his art yet in no particular had he the advantage of messer frese either in form or in feature but to come to the story twas in mugello that messer frese as likewise giotto had his country seat whence returning from a sojourn that he had made there during the summer vacation of the courts and being as it chanced mounted on a poor jade of a draught horse he fell in with the said giotto who was also on his way back to florence after a like sojourn on his own estate and was neither better mounted nor in any other wise better equipped than messer forese and so being both old men they jogged on together at a slow pace, and being surprised by a sudden shower, such as we frequently see fall in summer, they presently sought shelter in the house of a husbandman that was known to each of them, and was their friend. But after a while, as the rain gave no sign of ceasing, and they had a mind to be at Florence that same day, they borrowed of the husbandman two old cloaks of Romagnole cloth, and two hats, much the worse for age, there being no better to be had, and resumed their journey. Whereon they had not proceeded far, when, taking note that they were soaked through and through, and liberally splashed with the mud cast up by their nags' hooves, 
circumstances which are not of a kind to add to one's dignity they after a long silence the sky beginning to brighten a little began to converse and messer forese as he rode and hearkened to giotto who was an excellent talker surveyed him sideways and from head to foot and all over and seeing him at all points in so sorry and scurvy a trim and recking naught of his own appearance broke into a laugh and said giotto would e'er a stranger that met us and had not seen thee before believe thinkst thou that thou wert as thou art the greatest painter in the world whereto giotto answered promptly methinks sir he might if scanning you he gave you credit for knowing the a b c which hearing messer forese recognized his error and perceived that he had gotten as good as he brought end of day six the fifth story